Robotics may be to the 21st century what the automobile was to the last century. USM's Creative Intelligence and Innovation Lab was open last week with a special guest. Beth Mahan of Aldebaran Robotics talked with Brian Knobloch about how the convergence of technologies is leading to a new generation of interactive devices that could help humans with a wide variety of tasks. Hello, my name is Now. I'm a humanoid robot imagined and manufactured by Audi Baron Robotics. I come with a software and I'm fully programmable. Uh, Beth, tell us about your friend here. This is Rosie, and uh, it's known as Now. N A O is the robot, how it's known. Um, the company is Aldebaran Robotics, and the robot is being deployed to universities, research labs. Uh, K-12 schools, ideally for grade six and up, even high school, um, undergrads and graduates use it in classrooms and for research. What kind of capabilities does the robot have? The robot has audio and voice recognition. It can walk, talk, dance, grab objects, play music, um, identify your face as I mentioned. It can um, be fully programmable for customized movements, but it also has a software suite so you can navigate it. And it has natural motion and reflexes as well, right? Sensors? It has 12 sensors, yes. And what do they do? The sensors are used to detect not only objects, but sounds, and also uh, for surfaces, for example, it has four sensors on each of its feet, so it can sense whether it's on the floor or it's not. And what's the purpose of the presentation here today at USM? The purpose of our presentation was just to show the school the robot. Um, they may want to use it for research, um, they may want to use it for in computer science labs, for example. Um, when I do go to universities, oftentimes schools of education are interested in the robot for teach the teacher kind of robotics programs. The robot is used in many psychology labs across the world in, to, as a testing platform for possible um, communication device for children with autism, for example, or other um, individuals who might have disabilities. What kind of research in robotics do various universities do? Are some of it artificial intelligence, some of it is movement? How does that work? Yes, so that's absolutely correct. Uh, localization, mapping, research, um, as I mentioned, um, interacting and research with maybe speech impediments or language barriers, um, attention deficit disorders type of research for um, individuals, um, advancements in elderly care, and robotics applications in the home for someone that might want assistance or even just to have a robot in the home as a companion. What kind of uh, assistance could it provide to a, an elderly person or a, a child, uh, someone with disabilities right. in so the, the future? Yes, so the size of this robot is such that it only has its you know, physical limitations to its size. It only weighs 15 pounds, so it's not gonna be pick up a load of laundry and do a load of laundry, but the size of this robot is a good testing platform for those advancements. So the goal of our company is to provide a robot in the home ultimately. And the robot would be doing things like helping out with particular tasks that somebody might not be able to perform. Um, this robot could call 911. It could read you its email, your email. It could um, remind you to take your medicine. Um, there are certain things that it can do because it, even though it has its physical limitations. Would robots like this, in this size or larger, be a, a cost-effective solution for helping somebody who needs assistance in the home as opposed to having a full-time caregiver? Yes, we think so. If you look at the cost, um, I'm not an expert in this field, and, you know, it's, um, but I, I think that most individuals would take a look at what they might be paying for their elder care, whether it's a nurse in the home or having someone live in a facility is exceptionally expensive. Um, I hear rates of you know three to five thousand dollars even for a week for some elderly people to be in these care facilities, and so it's not to say that it's going to take the place of health care, but it can solve a lot of issues potentially for someone who wants to stay in the home longer um, because it does have cameras, so someone could check in on their elderly um, parent, for example, and make sure that they took their medicine and make sure that they're still watching TV and they're sitting comfortably, things like that, basic things that might be helpful. And what kind of educational programs do you have as well? So the educational partnership program um, is something that we stand behind and that's where we, um, uh, we have an application that schools will fill out 
and then they purchase five or more robots and they receive a significant discount on the robot. They tell us what they'd like to do with the robot, whether it be a workshop, a summer camp, um, a computer science lab course with Intro to Robotics, for example, using our STEM curriculum um, for the focuses of science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And so where do you see the future going? What's your, what's your ultimate goal? Uh, in my view, I think that robots will be used as a tool to help people's lives and improve people's lives and also at the same time be um, an, an advanced pl platform to be able to perform functions that might be hazardous to a human, like working in a radioactive facility, for example. So I do think that there's a strong demand for it, um, and I think that that will continue to grow. I don't think robots are going away. I think that it's really kind of a wave of a big revolution that's actually happening.